hands, I have in my hands right here proof that some gun companies do listen to consumers. This is the Henry side loading gate lever action rifle. As you guys know, Henry has always been ones that relied on their tube fed type of magazine system and loading system for a long time. And it's no secret that people have asked Henry time and time again to provide side loading gate options. Well, I know people don't like to change what has worked for them and clearly lever action rifles, Henry has pretty much perfected that and cornered the market on that. However, this is a big deal for them. And the fact that they did this shows me that they care about the consumers because I've gotten plenty. I mean, you go to most of the gun channels out there, including mine that has about 249 uh, subscribers to it, but go to some of the big gun channels out there and you're gonna see anytime those of us do any kind of re uh, re uh, review on a Henry repeating arms rifle, you're usually gonna find in the comments, somebody say, hey man, add a side loading gate and I'm in, I'll buy one. You know, you see it all the time. It's it's almost like saying, does it take Glock magazines? You're so used to those comments coming about the Henry's. Now they got it. And the reason why is because they listen to you. They listen to me. That's a beautiful thing. I love the fact that gun companies are listening. And look, let me tell you something. Henry knocked it out of the park, right out of the box with this thing. The one I have here is the 3030 model. That's a caliber that I just love. I mean, you can take this thing hunting if you want. Cool thing is you're drilled and tapped on top where you can put some kind of uh, uh, optics or scope, whatever you want to do on here. So this is actually a multifunction gun. This thing is not meant to be a safe queen. As you're going to see here in a minute, this thing will be fired, but it's not meant to be in a safe. It's meant to be used. This is a rugged firearm. It's an all-purpose firearm, one that you can take out, go hunting, go plinking, go shooting, do whatever you want with it, go home, clean it up, and put it right back on the wall again. That's what I like about these Henrys. They're durable, they're not like glass. You can actually treat them the way you want to treat a firearm. This particular model, I was really impressed with the wood, first of all. Not just the, let's not even talk about the engraving in the wood right now. Let's talk about the wood grain. This is some high quality North American walnut. This is some beautiful stuff right here. The wood grain is awesome in it. I love this cheek piece, the way it's molded into the cheek, into the uh, buttstock itself. That's gonna give you an opportunity to really get low on your sight picture and that sight radius and really get to where you can get to those optics without leaning over, giving it the old AK uh, neck bend whenever you're trying to get down to your sights. This allows you to do that. But all the little accents on this thing, you can, and again, if we're gonna speak of the wood, look at the engraving on the wood. It's not just standard checkering. You've got all this floral design on there. You've got the Henry logo emblazoned on the front forend. That's a beautiful touch. You'll notice it's got sling swivels. Again, this gun was not meant to be sitting in a shelf somewhere or in a safe somewhere. It's meant to be used. That's what these guys are for. They're not for show, they're for use. The sights, it has nice sights. I like the front post on this thing. Um, to me, that is something that's very easy to acquire. Some people don't like the semi buckhorn on this thing with the diamond in front of it. You know, talking about the diamond being potentially distracting, I don't notice it, but guys, I have some of the worst eyes ever. So there are some things that I'm just not gonna notice that the average person notices that has better eyesight. So the diamond is not a distraction to me whenever trying to acquire my sight picture. Um, it's pretty easy. This uh, rear sight is adjustable for windage and for elevation. Uh, pretty simple. You just unscrew the screw at the very front of the rear uh, uh, optic right there and move it left or right according to whatever direction you're trying to go. And of course, you run this thing up or down in order, uh, depending on whether you're trying to shoot up or down. Of course, it's got the brass receiver, the brass ring on it, and it has a brass butt plate too. That's really nice. Um, this thing doesn't thump that hard when you shoot it. It's actually got, surprisingly, and it's po possibly because of the mass, the weight of the gun here, it doesn't kick, it doesn't thump you like you would expect a 30-30 to. I shot a couple of different types of ammo here today, so you're gonna notice that, you know, some of them may recall a little more than the other, 150 grain versus 170 grain. I didn't see that much difference, but I'm sure that mathematically and physically there was some difference. The loading of the gun, it was effortless, but you got to make sure and guide these rounds in there. We're talking about a really long round and the way it's got, the trajectory that it's got to go in there and duck inside and then you push it forward, it doesn't make it a real fast reload. You're not going to be doing a quote, tactical reload with this guy. Um, it's not sluggish and slow. It's just that you got to be aware of what you're doing and be cognizant of how you're putting these rounds in there. Not a big deal though. One thing that I like most about this rifle, and I got to tell you guys, 
Uh, I'm a fan of Henry's anyway. Lever action rifles I really like. You've seen my video, my Winchester 1873. So it's not just the Henry brand that I like. I just like these old fashioned lever action style uh, rifles. But this has got to be one of the safest uh, lever action rifles on the market today. Why? Okay, a couple of reasons why. The biggest knock that you had against Henry before not providing a side loading gate was the very fact that if you were using their traditional knurled knob here to turn and access your loading tube right here to enter to uh, insert your, your ammo into the magazine tube, that got you right up close here in front of the muzzle. And I mean, I've had people chastise me on videos that, ooh, you got in front of the muzzle whenever you were loading it. Well, you know, I'm loading it. And of course I checked it and I know you're never supposed to get in front of the muzzle, but sometimes it's a little difficult whenever you're dealing with this loading gate right here at the muzzle. So sometimes you flash yourself. And that's always something that I never recommend anybody doing. Um, again, just because I might do it doesn't mean that it's okay for somebody else to do it. I always cringe when I see somebody do that but it's not a cool thing. It's not a safe thing. That was always the biggest complaint. However, another thing that I never liked, and this works the opposite way, the guns that did not have this magazine tube capability right here to load or unload, and that's important, the reason why I say unload, if you only had your side gate right here, like your Winchester 1873, if you want to um, uh, disarm the gun or unload the gun, you have to work that action. You gotta continuously work that action and you have to bring every single round through the magazine tube up through the working action of the gun, past the firing pin and out of the actual rifle. To me, that's very unsafe depending on what type of environment you're in. I mean, think about it. If you're out uh, cowboy action shooting and you have a bunch of people around you, I know that we always say, you know, make sure the gun's unloaded, make sure it's clear, do this, do that. All this, we try to go through all the safety rules, but when you have tons of distractions and fatigue might be setting in and you have all those different things playing in, sometimes it's easy to overlook that you're cycling rounds through your action in order to clear the gun and you might actually end or you might miscount and again I'm not saying it's okay what i'm saying is it could happen you might miscount and actually leave one in the chamber ready to go firing pin cocked and locked and ready to roll and you might actually aim your gun downwards to try to lo lower the hammer and bang you set off a round so to me that makes this gun extremely safe because not only now do i not have to get in front of my muzzle when I'm loading because I don't have to use this bottom gate, the old traditional Henry style gate. I don't have to use that anymore. Now I can load all my rounds through the side gate right here. When I'm ready to unload, I just ignore the side gate right here. Now I go up here and I can open my tube without getting in front of my muzzle because all I'm doing is twisting this knob and getting this thing off, pull the magazine, uh, the tube out of it and dump all of my rounds out. So very, very easy to stay safe with this gun. Essentially what I'm saying is you never have to run the risk of a live round going through your chamber that you didn't intend to, and you also don't have to run the risk of your hand getting in front of the muzzle. Safety is a big deal to me, guys. It really is. I feel like as gun owners, we have a tremendous responsibility because the anti-gun folks are always looking for a reason to hammer us, and they love those accidental and those negligent discharges. They absolutely love those because that means that that's a knock and a negative against us. This gun to me is one of the safest lever actions out there. It's gonna prevent any of those things from happening and not give the anti-gun left any fodder to use against us. I've got a couple targets set up out here. I've got one set up at 35 yards from steel, and then I have another target just to its left, the little black plate down there, set up at about 45 yards. I'm gonna to try to put two of my rounds on the 35 yard target and then the smaller 45 uh, yarder, I'm gonna to try to put three rounds on it. I'm shooting some Remington core locked 30, 30 rounds, 150 grains. And um, I've shot these before in this gun. So I don't think I'm gonna have any issues here. So we are good to go and I am loaded, ready to roll guys. Let's see, 35 yards here. Knock my plate down. Okay, so I knocked it down. So now I'm gonna go with um, four rounds on my smaller 45 yard plate out there. It shouldn't fall down. That's my action target PT uh, target. Really cool target. It balances really, really well. See if I can hit it now. All right, a little stiff right there. Did you notice that? I did hit the target, but I'm a little stiff of my uh, getting my rounds in. Hit it again. Yeah, I got to work this action a little bit because it's not. Hit it again. It's not as smooth as I would like it to be, 
but it's not broken in either. In reactions are so smooth like butter. All right, that's four shots on target. I like it guys, four shots on target. Uh, five actually, if you include the one I knocked down. Shoots really well. Let me shoot some of this other ammo. Again, that was my Remington Core Lock, 150 grain, 30-30 ammo. All right, again, I have some 150 grain rounds. These are Winchester 30-30. These are actually uh, black bear rounds for hunting black bear with the 30-30. So uh, I don't suspect I'm gonna have any different performance, but nevertheless, let's give it a shot. That was probably on me, I missed. Got it that time. Got it that time. Yeah, this is a little stiff. If you notice, I'm having to use kind of my thumb to pull this to get it out. In other words, just using my fingers like a cowboy would, I kind of got to tuck the gun here in order to get me some leverage on it. Oh, that came open a little easier. That's it, that's five. Okay, four on target. <laughs> Operator air is a son of a gun, guys. Uh, I got one more uh, batch of rounds. Let's see how they shoot. Okay, I got some 170 grain Monarch this time. The reason why I chose the Monarch is because I wanted to grab a little bit cheaper round. You know, these 30-30 rounds, they're not that cheap. So if you're wanting to go out and do some target practicing to get ready for bear hunting season or deer hunting season, whatever you use your 30-30 for, um, I feel like you want to get some cheaper rounds sometimes to at least get acclimated with your gun and sighting it in. And then, of course, you want to really refine that with your normal round that you're actually going to be hunting with. You always want to finish up with your hunting round to make sure that you're actually getting the same kind of performance out of it. However, this is a 170 grain round, this Monarch. Um, decent price for their uh, rounds. Looks like a good looking uh, round. It's got the nice lead tip on it and everything for game hunting. So I feel like it's going to be a pretty decent round. So let's see how it shoots again. This is a 170 grain Monarch. One thing I noticed, nothing necessarily in recoil, like the mass didn't seem to give me any different recoil impulse, but I did note, ouch. That thing is hot. <laughs> that barrel's hot. I did notice that the um, the the target rocked a little bit more. So that eh, 20 grains extra. What do you think? You know, it must have made a difference because I did notice my target. It didn't come close to knocking down. Again, these action target PT targets are really really good. The way they angle them, they stand up nicely, regardless of getting hit. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it it stood up well. Uh, but it rocked a little bit more with the 170. So that isn't a little bit noticeable, but it's to be expected. We're sending a bigger bigger hunk of uh, uh, lead down there. This is a round that's running at, guys, 2,100 and something feet per second. Over 2,000 feet per second, a pretty decent size, 170 grain round. So it's going to bring some, uh, some heat down there whenever it hits something. Imagine when it hits that game. Why do you think people like to use a 30-30 to hunt big game with? That's why. A lot of mass, moving really fast. You know, sometimes guys, these companies hear from us, they hear from the consumers often, <laughs> and sometimes they don't like the wording. You know, people get pretty brave on social media, of course, and they hear us complain or they hear us comment back to them about their products and about their products that they've worked so hard on. You know, they spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of money, um, a lot of manpower, you know, and a lot of emotion in many cases, designing their products, producing them, manufacturing them, and putting them out to the general public. It's a little off-putting. Uh, you got companies like Glock out there that people wonder if they even have an inbox that they read or if they read any of their email. Clearly, Henry does. Um, they listen to the people. Believe me, guys, Henry makes enough money selling the rifles that they sell because their stuff is so high quality. They've got collectors that buy their stuff. They've got some hunters that buy their stuff. Uh, people appreciate the workmanship and the craftsmanship over at Henry, and they have for many, many years. So Henry didn't have to do this. They did this because they're customer focused. And guys, let me tell you something real quick. I bought this gun with my own money. Henry did not send me this. Henry does not know I'm making this video. This is not a promotional video for Henry. I happen to be a fan of the company because they're a good company and they make awesome products. So again, I spent my own good hard earned money for this 3030 right here. This is mine and it's staying in my gun room. But with that being said, I appreciate the fact that they listen. Again, guys, they didn't have to do this. 
but they did it anyway. And to me, that says a lot as a buyer, as someone out there thinking that, okay, there's a company that might listen to me. They're not going to listen to just little old me, but collectively they're listening to all of us. And that's cool. Henry put out a good product, guys. This thing is going to be in multiple calibers. Let me tell you something. I'm one of those kind of guys that puts things together without reading owner's manuals. I do not read owner's manuals. It, uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> I've put things together wrong and had to go back and take them apart and put them back together again, reading the actual instruction manual because I didn't read it the first time. I read Henry's instruction manual for two reasons. Number one, this is a new product. I had never dealt with their system before, having both loading options here. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing something stupid. I wanted to make sure there wasn't something that I had to disengage or something crazy that you just don't know. This is, this is a new thing. So I read it for that reason, which is the only reason why I cracked it open. And when I cracked it open, man, I gotta tell you, it's not hard to read. Whoever at Henry designed this thing has got to be just as ADD as I am because it's designed to where a guy like me with a very, very short attention span can actually read it, digest it, use it, put it down, and go on about my business without it, number one, taking me all day, getting me lost. It's not these stupid pictures that are Xeroxed or photocopied or whatever that are so black you can't see anything on them. It's not this crazy word. Look, guys, it's easy to follow. This is one of the first instruction manuals that I've read in years, probably from cover to back. And uh, it shows you the different calibers that this gun is available in or going to be available in. Right now, it's only available, I believe, in three different calibers. But uh, it's kind of cool because when you open the manual up, it actually states other calibers in there. So you can kind of get a picture of where Henry's going with this rifle with some of the other calibers they'll be offering soon. I was kind of interested and, and uh, really surprised to see that as new as their 410 shotgun is, lever action shotgun, that this thing is planned to be in a 410 variant with the side loading gate. That's kind of interesting to me. I wasn't expecting them. I thought they were just taking that little soiree into the shotgun world with their uh, lever action 410s and that was gonna be it, but apparently they liked it. So again, the side loading gate is gonna be made in 410 also at some point, according to the instruction manual. Nobody at Henry has told me that, but they printed it, so. But anyway, folks, I like this gun. Um, if you get a chance to shoot one, you know, I recommend you buy it uh, or borrow it from a buddy or something like that. You know, like all Henry products, you know, they're not crazy expensive, but they're not the cheapest in the world. You get what you pay for. You're paying for some good American craftsmanship. Um, you noticed earlier that the uh, the barrel got really hot on me. Uh, put it up against my, in fact, there's a little burn mark on my, on my bicep there. Um, these things get hot. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right in here. And what's interesting, if you'll notice, I put the, uh, the flare thermal on here just to see what kind of heat I was dealing with. I saw upwards to 170 degrees as I came down closer to the chamber where most of the explosion is happening. Obviously, as you get further down towards the muzzle, it starts to cool down a little bit because again, most of the explosion and most of the gunpowder is being spent back here by the chamber. So uh, yeah, 170 degrees or at least 150 or 160 degrees against your arm is not a fun thing. You guys know I'm very safety focused and I just wanna put that out there guys. So please be careful. This thing can get a little hot and don't be cool like me or try to act cool like me and uh, lay, <laughs> lay it across your arm so you look cool. Not a good thing to do. Guys, if you get a chance to shoot one, go try one out. The Henry 3030, this is the model that I have. Lever action, side loading gate uh, rifle. Check them out, man. They're nice, a lot of fun to shoot quality products by Henry.